My boyfriend, 57, of four years and I, 42 female, split recently. We met while we were both going through divorces, and we got together about six months after mine was final. His divorce was final before mine. We live in different towns, so we sometimes would go a couple of weeks between visits due to distance, but it worked for us. He has four kids, male 37, female 35, male teen, male tween, and youngest with his second ex-wife. I share two kids, male 18, female teen, with my ex-husband. So it hasn't made sense for us to move closer due to fighting with exes to change custody agreements. I found out eight months ago I was pregnant. This was completely unexpected, as he had a vasectomy after his last son was born. Neither of us had any intention to have more children, and I was not prepared to be pregnant at 41. I didn't even find out I was pregnant until I was almost five months along, because my periods have been odd for years due to a combination of weight loss, anemia, genetics, and age. I went to see him, and his reaction was, well, he broke things off with me and had some very choice words to call me. He refused to believe anything other than that I was seeing someone else and trying to pin this pregnancy on him. His ex-wife cheated on him often, which is why they split. So part of me understands his emotional reaction, but he spent the last eight months ghosting me and refused to speak to me. The babies, twins, were born three months ago. I do not need his financial help, but I decided to file for child support so he would do a paternity test. Once his friend said he took the test, but before we had the results, which I never needed, he was the only person I had been with. I had him served with papers to sign over his parental rights and all financial responsibility as well. Unsurprisingly, he signed the documents without hesitation. We got the paternity test results back. Now he's blowing up my phone and showing up at my house angry at me, saying I'm the idiot because I refuse to entertain the idea of getting back together or moving closer to him. He also says I tricked him into signing over his rights. I'm aware that he may be able to fight me as it's recent. Some of my friends and family tell me I'm an idiot for doing this to him, and others say they understand why I did. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Why would you get back together with someone who accused you of cheating? He has nobody to blame but himself. And if he signed over rights and the kids weren't his, the papers wouldn't have meant a damn thing. It sounds to me like his family's giving him crap, and now he wants to save face. I'm sorry, but what did you do to him? He's the villain in this story. Tricked him into signing over his rights? Yeah, sure, right. He knowingly signed away his rights, unless you presented a stack of mundane papers awaiting his signature and hit the paternity docs in the middle. There was no trickery. Your ex needs a wake-up call on reality and personal responsibility. Um, isn't it rather normal to assume that the other person has cheated if she became pregnant and he's gone through a vasectomy? Trauma from being cheated on, a long-distance relationship, and the inability of men to truly know if a child is theirs outside of DNA testing make this possible. I can easily see how a person would lose their sanity over this type of situation and make stupid decisions. Holy moly, what a roller coaster. First, he didn't believe you when you said the babies were his, and now he's mad because they are his, biologically? He knew he took a paternity test and chose to sign over his rights without waiting for the results? He's an adult. He's responsible for his actions. This is all on him. I don't blame you for not wanting to get back with him. It's his loss and his fault. You are the idiot. You did trick him into signing the papers. He's also a moron for signing them before the results, but this is understandable because he had a vasectomy. He thinks you cheated on him because he shouldn't be able to have kids. The only reason you sent the papers is because you didn't want to share custody, and that's it, which makes you the idiot. You are doing a disservice to your newborn twins because they'll probably never have a meaningful relationship with their father if they only see him a handful of days of the year. For context here, my cousin Freya, 31 female, is my 28 female best friend. We have always been inseparable and even lived together growing up. With that said, it's no secret that she has been around the block, and when she drinks, she often uses this as an excuse. I was drinking, it doesn't count. 
I don't care what she does, usually. With that said, she basically tells everyone she meets that she is a, and I quote, floozy. Her words, not mine. Also, with that said, I never agreed with her or denied it when she did say this about herself, which may or may not be why I'm the idiot. So I'm married now and have three kids. She has two kids and still doesn't particularly like the idea of settling and still indulges in her lifestyle ways. I had gotten a babysitter last weekend for my babies for the first time in like 10 months and had a little party at my place, to which I invited her and our other cousin, Sam. Sam is also a mom of two kids and she doesn't ever get out. So come 10 p.m., she was sleeping on my couch. She brought her boyfriend with her who stayed up with my husband playing Pong. Freya already had way too many to drink, and I definitely started getting the feeling that I already knew how this was going to pan out. Finally, Freya began to get vocal about wanting to bring someone to bed, and unfortunately, Sam's boyfriend was at the top of her list. So it got to a point where she kept saying, I just want to talk to him, or making those semi-mean flirty comments to him, and it just made me super uncomfortable. So I pulled her to the side and told her to cut the crap. I told her she wasn't going to do this in my house with our cousin's boyfriend and she needed to pull it back and be respectful. So like, don't be that person. So again, she says, I just want to talk to him. So I stated, you know, as well as I do that you can't talk if he's in your bed. And that's exactly what you're planning on doing. She laughed at first, but then the alcohol took over and she got angry at me saying that I was calling her promiscuous and that she couldn't believe I would accuse her of trying to screw over our cousin. But she truly would have. She's done some shady stuff before and burnt bridges with our other cousin after single-handedly destroying their marriage. Am I the idiot? If this is Freya's character and she's willing to hurt her own family just to get what she wants, what do you see in her as a friend? I'm genuinely curious. Not the idiot, but I hope you told Sam everything about what Freya tried to do. That's disgusting. It's all good and dandy to live whatever lifestyle she wants, but it seems to be at someone else's expense, continually. And the fact that she has kids and does this is upsetting, to say the least. Are her children safe? Because you may be the idiot if her kiddos are young and alone for those escapades and you're aware of it, or if she's bringing home sketchy dudes to her place with her children around. It just sounds gnarly, and Freya needs a good kick in the butt to figure her priorities out. Not the idiot for looking out for your cousin, but was Sam's boyfriend open to it? I would tell Sam about it if he was accepting of Freya's advances. Her cousin crossed a big line. It's harassment. I feel like people are being a bit too soft on her. If a guy did this kind of thing, the comments would be filled with how creepy that behavior was. Out teen female, try to keep it short. My mom, 40, has no boundaries. She thinks because I'm her daughter, this never happened with my brother, 24, because he's a guy. She can do pretty much everything she wants with me. She barges into my room. I'm not allowed to have a lock. She barges into the bathroom when I'm showering. She wears my clothes because she's thin like me. She talks over me when someone is asking me something. Teachers, strangers, doctors. She makes decisions for me. If I ask for something, she brings whatever she wants because she knows me better etc etc i've been having a few problems and i think i might have pcos so i want to go to the doctor but i don't want my mom to come with me she'll make it about her she won't let me talk and if i dare to ask her to wait outside she'll make a huge scene so last week i asked my brother if he could take me and i pretty much explained the above he said yes picked me up from school last tuesday and took me to the doctor I had to get some tests, but in the meantime, my doctor gave me some birth control pills and I've been taking them. Well, this morning, my mom barged into my room again and saw me with the box in my hands and it all broke loose. I had to come clean and I told her that I had gone to the doctor and she gave me some pills. She cried because I asked my brother to take me and not her. She said I betrayed her, that a man had no business taking me there and blah, blah, blah. Her husband, he's not my dad and neither my brother's dad, said that I was acting like a spoiled witch and implied that I was using the pills for something else. He grounded me and I was not allowed to eat dinner. 
He also said I had to clean his car tomorrow and that I had to babysit his youngest daughter for two weeks. I'm debating about calling my brother, but maybe am I the idiot? So I should just suck it up? You can't eat? Excuse me? Call your brother right now. Also, the cops on your stepdad. It's pretty disturbing how all the punishments are free labor for the stepdad. Talk about trying to take advantage of a situation. I'm sorry that you're in this situation. Not the idiot. Call your brother and live with him. Your parents are punishing you for taking the initiative to take care of a basic human function. They're more worried about their status of being the adults and leaders. They don't care about your health. You have the right to health care without interference. Even if you were planning to use them for something else, you have the right to those pills. Call your brother and ask if you can move in with him or with dad if he's still in the picture. If mom makes any noise, tell them that whoever they'll send after you, you tell them how you were punished with no food for two weeks. Your mom has no boundaries whatsoever and is clearly narcissistic. There's a reason why you're sneaking around. Her husband also sounds like a prick. Get out of that toxic environment if you can. You deserve better. My 18 female, father 43, and his partner 40 female, have just had their first baby together, my half-sister. My dad's partner has been on the scene since I was two. My dad cheated on my mom with his now partner and then left my mom for her. His partner has always given me a hard time, saying mean things and pretending that they're jokes particularly when my dad isn't there. For example, I always make her and my dad coffee in the mornings when I stay with them, and she'll say to people while I'm standing right there how bad I am at making coffee or joke that her tween niece is better at doing it than me, that sort of thing. Anyway, I used to stay at their house one night a week, but a couple of years ago, they moved three hours away from where I live with my mom and go to school, slash uni, etc. I've been excited about the baby, so I went and stayed with my dad while his partner and the baby were still in the hospital after the birth. I did a grocery shop and got the house nice before they came home. My dad had issues and is pretty useless at anything like that. Given that they live too far away for me to drop in regularly, I planned to stay for a week once partner and baby came home. I took time off for my part-time job, etc. I figured I could cook and do housework and run errands for them and stuff so my dad and his partner could focus on bonding with the baby. Anyway, when his partner and the baby were meant to come home, my dad told me that they wanted it to be just family, i.e. my dad, his partner, and the baby, and that I needed to go home. Now, I'm like 99% sure this is coming from his partner. I don't think my dad would care if I was there. I lost it, crying and yelling at my dad, and asked my dad if this had happened a year ago, and he'd somehow had full custody of me at the time, and if he would have just turned me out to make room for the baby. He said, of course not, and backtracked quickly, and said I could stay, but I was really upset then and said no. I went into my room and stayed there, even after the baby and partner came home, and then I left the next morning. My dad and his partner are angry with me for throwing a tantrum, and leaving, and making it about me when they're trying to focus on the new baby. I was upset and told my friend's mom about it, and she said I was being an idiot to make such a big deal over it, as I'm technically an adult, I'm nearly 19, and it's fair enough that my dad's partner just wanted to be with him and the baby. The whole thing has made me feel like crap. Am I the idiot? Edit. Me being there and prepping the house was agreed ages in advance. It was my idea, but they agreed and knew I had to get time off from the restaurant where I work, etc., then they changed their minds and said they just wanted it to be family. Not the idiot. You were trying to do something nice for your dad and his mistress. You call her partner, but I'll call it like it is, lol. You were basically told you're not family with the statement that we only want family here. Sorry, OP. Your dad wants to start over, and apparently that's not with the child of the woman he cheated on. You were planning to be there to help with the baby. You prepared the house and did the grocery shop. Yes, you're an adult, but that doesn't make you any less his daughter. And it totally sounds like they waited for a baby until you were old enough to be out of the house. It's possible your stepmom has wanted to push you out for some time. She doesn't consider you family, despite knowing you since you were a child. I wouldn't blame you if you went low contact with them, especially when the baby starts getting bigger 
and then stepmom is going to need a free sitter and guilt you into doing it for family. Those two don't deserve you, and they made it clear you're not family. You sound like a great person. Use your energy on people who treat you well. Definitely, you are the idiot for acting like this and making it about you. New mamas need their privacy, and they need to figure out so many new things after delivery. They're in a ton of pain and discomfort. Hormones are through the roof, etc. The last thing they need is someone uninvited to be hovering around. You meant to be there out of good intentions, but it was a bit short-sighted. People don't want their mother-in-laws around or siblings, etc. until they're mentally and physically more able to handle company. I've been with my fiancé for five years. His mom passed away two years into our relationship, and at the time, we weren't engaged yet. I've always gotten along with everyone in his family, except his mom. She made it clear that she didn't like me very much and that I'm not welcomed in the family. She even implied that our relationship would probably not last because we're too different. I've always been nice and cordial with her, though most of her hostility towards me was indirect, so nothing ever escalated. My fiancé was, for the most part, oblivious about this. Fast forward to last week when he proposed. I knew he was planning to, but I had no idea that his mom left her ring for him to propose to his future wife with. I said yes, obviously, but after a few days, I told him that I wanted my own ring and not his mother's ring. He said that the ring meant a lot to him, and I said that I understood where he was coming from, but his mom wasn't all that kind towards me, and a ring is a big deal to me. I told my sister about this incident, and she said that I was being difficult and selfish, and that I shouldn't be speaking ill of the dead, that I should have considered my fiancé's feelings and cost when making that request. I just don't want a constant reminder that I'm unwanted on my finger, and I genuinely don't think I made an error here. He has a brother, and he can pass the ring down to him. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You're the one who will have to wear this ring for the rest of your life, and it's supposed to be a treasured reminder of the love you share with your partner instead of a reminder of someone who didn't like you or treat you well. I see why your fiancé feels sentimental about the ring, though. So maybe you could compromise by using the same stone in a different setting so the ring still feels like it's yours and not his mother's. You are the idiot. This family heirloom has great meaning to him, and you could at least be more respectful about the way you're going about it. It speaks volumes that he made the ultimate gesture of wanting you, and all you see is a symbol of being unwanted. And his mom was probably right. This ring is a symbol of his love for the previous most important woman in his life. It's the man you marry and not the ring that matters. You are the idiot. You seem materialistic. You should be grateful for getting a ring at all. And if not, then it's your fault for not telling him how you felt about his mother before she died. You shouldn't have kept his mom's treatment of you a secret. That's the kind of thing you have to talk about in a serious relationship. He probably would have known not to give you her ring if you had been more open. Calling OP the idiot for being materialistic? What? Nowhere in the story does she give any reason for not liking the ring other than it would be a constant reminder of someone who openly disliked her and wasn't kind to her. If she didn't like the ring because of aesthetics, it might be a different story. But in this case, OP is squarely not the idiot.